Hey, welcome back. Kevin Crawl here again. For today's video, I'm going to be making a simple segmented base out of these ordinary construction wood stakes. Um, these stakes I found, um, they are destined to be in the landfill, so I was able to salvage them and get the wood for free. They're just your basic ordinary uh, pine 2x2 two two wood stakes, and I'll just uh, go ahead and uh, leave them at that same size and uh, cut them up into segments and uh, get to making this base. So, thanks again for watching. Since this is just construction grade pine, first step I have to do is sort through it, uh, try to find the best pieces, and I'll cut out all these uh, defects. Um, a lot of checking and cracking and not, so I'll just go ahead and try to get as much uh, wood out of this as I can. Now this is the basic shape of the base I'm going after. This is based off a uh, previous bowl that I turned. Um, I had the length of my segments I calculated over here and I was able to just go ahead and transfer it over and just use that simple stop block and go ahead and start cutting up the pieces. Okay, since the base of the vase that I'm turning is wider than the stock that I'm using, I'm having to glue it up in two pieces. So that'd be two pieces wide right there. What I'm doing is just uh, gluing it up with a simple C clamp. Then after the glue sets, I'll go ahead and trim it down to the final size on the miter saw. And that's what the end result is. Okay, now I'm going to use a right angle sanding platform in my disc sander to clean up the frayed edges on these segments so I can glue them up in the rings. Okay, now we're ready to glue up the segments. If you do a lot of segmented turning, it's uh, smart to buy your glue in bulk uh, by the gallon size and just refill your small bottles. Okay, it's not perfect, but uh, go ahead and let it get uh, cured up and set it aside to dry. Now I glue my rings up in halves, and that allows me to fine tune the rings after the glue dries. I can take each half and I can fine tune my uh, angle here. So now when I glue up the two halves, I'll get a much tighter ring. Okay, now that I have all the half rings glued up, I can go ahead and sand down the surface of uh, both sides. Okay, my bottom ring, all my corners in meet exactly at a uh, central point. So to kind of masquerade that fact, I'm going to bore a hole using a Forstner bit and um, just make a simple plug to fit in there and uh, kind of take away from the inaccuracy of my cuts. So what I'm going to do is just use this little cut off of the 2x2 uh, two two wood stake here. And just use a little bit of a 
Texia glue on this glue block here. I'm going to glue this on real quick. Just a little bit. Okay, that's pretty well set up. What I can do is take my uh, Forrester bit and trace the outline of it a little bit and give me an idea general size I'm going after. And I'll be using a uh, Cressor wrench here to gauge it. Okay, there we go, finally. Simple little plug. So we'll go ahead and uh, attach the base now. There again, I'll just be using the uh, CA glue. Uh, make sure you use the thick. Just a nice thick bead like that, that's all you need. And we'll give that a couple minutes of set up. Okay, now that's set up. I can go ahead and put my uh, Jacobs chuck in my tailstock. I'll go ahead and put the Forestner's bit in there. Okay, we've got the first four rings glued up. And that's as far as I'm going to assemble it for now. The last two remaining rings I'm going to glue on after I turn the first four. And the reason for that is twofold. First of all, the height is too tall. And I can't turn it all in one turning. Second is the first four rings, the shape of it is traditional bowl turning. Um, last two is the inward turned rim, so I'll have to do some um, different techniques to get that uh, accomplished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue up the fifth and sixth ring to each other, and to do that I'm going to tape on the fifth ring 
and then glue on the, the sixth ring to the fifth ring and do a partial assembly and then after the fifth and sixth ring are glued together then I'll take it apart and turn the uh, first four. Okay, now that glue is cured, I'm just going to put a little extra tape here on the, uh, the sixth ring here. Then what I'll do, I'll just remove the tape from uh, the fourth and fifth ring. I can slide the tail stock back. And I'll just set these two rings aside uh, as I turn the, the first four. Okay, now we're ready to start turning the bottom four rings. Now what I'll do is start with a series of pull cuts and then I'll transition into push cuts as I get further away from the headstock. And to get started, what you always want to do with segment turning is make sure your tool rest has proper clearance from your segment rings. Um, these little points on your rings can jump out and get your tool rest if you're not careful. So let's go ahead and get started turning. Make sure I put my safety gear on. You just want to make light cuts to start out with. basically a slow process just uh, work the shape and get rid of your flat spots Yeah, it's starting to get there. A few flat spots I still have to go down, and I want to take the base down basically with the uh, even with the glue block, so I have a bit more shaping to do. Okay, from time to time, you might see me moving around trying to get out of the way of. My camera setup. What I'm trying to do for you is give you a bird's eye view of what I see as I'm doing my turning. So a lot of times I gotta make a cut and try to stay out of the way of the camera and try to keep the camera out of my view as I'm trying to turn. So I'm just trying to produce a little better videos to give you a little better uh, idea of what I do as I do my turning. So. <laughs>
Okay, I think I'm going to move on to shear scraping now. Just one little flat spot here that will disappear when I do the shear scraping. So, let's get to it. Okay, I went ahead and sanded up the outside a little bit, uh, just rough sanded it, finish the shaping. Now I'm going to get ready to turn the inside, and what I'm going to do to facilitate the glue up is I'm going to make my rim a little wider and then come into turning the inside shape. That way I have more surface area here for the glue up. Okay, now we'll go ahead and uh, get started turning the inside. Here again, you just want to make real light cuts to start out with. I'll go ahead and start to uh, take my wall thickness here. Okay, now we've got the inside turned and partially sanded. We'll go ahead and mount the final two rings. I'll go ahead and trace the outline here so I know where to glue. Okay, we'll go ahead and let this uh, cure up for a few hours and we'll get back to turning. Okay, now the glue is cured, we can go ahead and uh, turn the top two rings.
Okay, we got to stand it up through 320 grit. Okay, now we'll go ahead and finish turning the inside of the vase. And first thing I'll do is uh, I'll true up the, the rim here. On this one, I'm going to have a bit of a turned in rim. You can see that but I am making improper cuts I'm cutting from the smaller diameter out to the larger on the inside here but these are just uh, hogging out cuts I'm just trying to get as much bulk out as I can and I'll come back with a uh, shearing scrape or uh, even use a scraper on a, a shear cut and smooth it out Okay, now we got the inside and outside sanded down to 320 grit. We're good to go. Okay, before I take the, the vase off the glue block, I wanted to show you why I waited to add the two remaining rings, the two top rings here. Now the vase measures almost 9 inches in height, and if I tried to turn it at 9 inches, you can see getting down to the bottom, been quite a task. I would, had most of my uh, tool been over the tool rest and unsupported cuts and uh, it would have been quite a, a task. So waiting to put the last two rings on really simplified the whole process. Okay, moment of truth. We'll separate the blue black from the vase. Put down a towel to protect my vase here. Just take a chisel. Oh, Jesus. I don't believe that. God. You gotta be kidding me. Unreal. <sighs> Let's see if we can glue that back together. Yeah, I have over a week creating this vase, so I will be trying to salvage it. Um, I'm going to try to glue it up. Yeah, it's just my typical luck I have. Okay, it's been a couple hours. We'll go ahead and uh, take a look at it. Yep, 
Eh, it's not perfect, but uh, I think I at least salvaged it. It's not horribly out of balance, so it's probably as What I'll do is just sand it down. Okay, I'll try sanding it out now. Okay, for this vase, I'm just going to do a quick finish, especially since I have some defects because of the, the break. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, apply a couple coats of a sanding sealer, which is just basically a mixture of uh, half shellac and half uh, denatured alcohol, and allow that to dry and then knock it back with some uh, 4 off steel wool, and then apply a paste wax over the top of that. I'm just using a simple paste wax. Now the wax is dry, I'll go ahead and buff it out. I'll go ahead and apply one more coat of the, the paste wax. As you can see, it comes out pretty nice. Okay, this time to separate the vase from the glue block, I'm not going to use the hammer and chisel. I'm just going to use a coping saw. Now, to start the cut, what I did, I used my uh, parting tool to make a relief on the base here.
Well, that took an embarrassingly long time to do. Jeez, oh Pete. <clears throat> I guess I was never coming off with the hammer and chisel. We'll go ahead and get the bottom turned here. Well, for some reason I don't have a video of turning the bottom. No, I must have had the video camera turned off at the time. Sorry about that. In short, all I did was put the vase in my cold jaws and then turn a slight concavity on the foot so the vase won't rock when I put it on a flat surface. And here's a close-up of the repair. As you can see, it's not a perfect match, but it's not bad. Most people probably wouldn't even notice it. Well, once again, I hope you enjoyed watching me turn this project. So please don't forget to hit the like button and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So until next time, thanks again for watching.